to it after a couple more days after the, the game? I haven't seen him today, so um, I'm not sure. But uh, I'm sure he would have um, he would have moved on, and it was a great effort. There was no doubt about that. I mean, in the second quarter, he kept us in the game, and um, you know his presence in front of the ball was enormous, and uh, he kicked so accurately. So he had a wonderful game, and um, it's not an easy thing to do these days is, is to kick nine. So um, to be able to get the reward for his effort was fantastic for him. I know he didn't have the same output against Geelong, but he had that sort of similar moment where he guys he got you guys on that board. He, he lives to that occasion. And how important is it to have a player like that who, who can do that? Yeah, probably against Geelong. He was up the ground and, and created some big contests that were able to get some spillages of that then resulted in the goals. You're right, he didn't kick the goals himself, but... Um, he's been able to do that really well. He's been able to have a big presence in our front half and um, you know, hopefully he continues. He got rewarded with, on the goal, uh, as far as the goal scores on the weekend, but on the, you know, as far as his playing presence in, in our front half, it's been really strong. I think he said um, that he had a little look up to the coach's box when he came off. I was only joking. <laughs> has he said anything? <laughs> I was only joking. Has he said anything to you? I feel maybe in a joking way. No, about it. no, no. I mean, he, he was a little bit tight in the last couple of minutes. We saw him get up a couple of times from a couple of contests and... Uh, you know, with his injury history, I'm sure everyone appreciates the fact that we, we want him playing this week. And my experience over the years is sometimes things can happen in the last two or three minutes and um, in regards to injuries with players and particularly ones with injury history. So we just want to look after him and, and uh, get him to this week's game, which is the most important thing. What is a game like that? I mean, you've been through it yourself as a young key forward, no doubt, but he's had some big games. But when you go to that level and have nine, what does that do for your, your confidence and your belief going forward? Well, it's, it sort of underlines the process that he's been going on in, in this bit of a journey, I guess, is growing into an AFL key forward is, is if you keep turning up every week and keep putting your preparation in and if you keep competing like he's been competing in games and creating a real presence in our front half, that at some point you'll get the reward and hopefully that's the reinforcement that you take out of it. And what is his injury history? Well, he hasn't really done a pre-season. He's, he's, um, you know, he's missed some games with injuries and groins and, and different things over the journey. So we want to make sure that um, uh, he gets through the game really well, doesn't get injured and is available this week. What did you say to him after the game? I know you haven't seen him today, but what, did you have like a personal message, a personal word with him after the game? What did you say? Oh, <laughs> it was probably between him and I. We have a bit of a bit of a running joke, I guess, as far as um, uh, the key forward um, brigade, I guess. Um, have a bit of a laugh about that. But um, I, I actually, we had a bit of a chuckle about it, but I just said to him, well done. You know, it was, you know, we're really appreciative of his effort to keep us in the game in that first half. And we were, our pressure that we applied in the second half was, was outstanding, but he was still a big presence in front of the ball. Do you think you'll so, still get a lot more out of him even then? I know you just said he hasn't really had a full pre-season kind of feel like as a fan watched his confidence build this season. Do you think there's still plenty left to get out of him? Yeah, we think so. But, I mean, the, I think the, what's left is that consistency. It's not doesn't have to reach the highs of, of that. Sorry about that. Sorry. The, the highs of it. But if you're, if you're consistent uh, every week and your approach to the contest, that's all we're after. We're not expecting nine goals every week. We're just expecting the approach to the contest, which is what we need in a consistency basis. Can you talk us through his... Uh, development because he's been here for a few years now, obviously, yeah. and you signed him up on a three year contract last year, so obviously, he had some confidence where he was going to go. But he hadn't shown a huge amount over the what, previous four years, yeah. He hadn't done a lot of training and playing, yeah. so that's um, that comes into it. So, his, his, his history has been that he's been uh, had a number of injuries over the journey, and um, and that's taken the development area out of him. So, your, your best way of he had more of a pre season this year, this year was probably his best pre season, and Often, most often, uh, good seasons or good performances come off the back of some consistency over the pre-season. He was able to get much more consistency this year. Um, so therefore, we've seen some development in him and, um, and also some self-confidence and self-belief in, in the impact that he can have. He's big, he's strong, he's quick. Um, it's going to be much tougher for him this week. Um, Sam Taylor's probably the best defender going around the competition at the moment. It's going to be a real challenge for him. Second week in a row, you've been challenged earlier than seemingly flicked a switch and just mm. blown the opposition away. How comforting is it for you that your team is able to do that in different ways? Uh, in some ways, comforting, but also looking at the other areas that we need to improve on. We had double the inside 50s as Adelaide in the first quarter. Uh, we just didn't, we weren't great aerially and we didn't stop them. They were able to score a bit too easily in the first quarter, which was a bit similar to the week before. So we've got a, work, a bit of work to do there. Um, it's good to be able to have the belief to 
to kick into it when we when we got going. But um, we were really pleased with our second half, our pressure around the footy. We didn't really get the reward until late in that quarter. But early on, we'd started a lot better than what we'd played in that first half in regards to pressure around the ball. It's a pretty simple game sometimes. If you get that right, a lot of other things flow from it. When the opposition is scoring well in that first term, is it something to do with the defence slowly warming up to the game? Is it their pressure or the opposition's pressure building? Is it just a combination? Oh, it's a combination of everything. It's always a combination of everything. So um, we thought we surged quite well in that first half, first quarter, and particularly in the slippery conditions. But um, we just got beaten a few contests, and they were able to kick goals off the back of it, a bit like they were the week before. So, um, but you know, we were able to rectify that. We reduced their inside 50 count dramatically after half time, and. Um, our pressure around the ball was fantastic. Our clearance work was really strong, and um, and that led to some ground position. How important is being able to capitalise when you do have a moment like yours? Five goals in ten minutes against Geelong, six and twelve uh, against Adelaide. Being able to go, okay, we've got a bit of the ascendancy, and, and putting that damage on the scoreboard themselves. Yeah, it's good to be able to do that if you if you need to. You want to make sure that you you don't rely upon that all the time. But yeah, it's good to be able to do it and have the belief that you can do it when you need to. Um, and that was, you know, the, the last two weeks we've been able to do that in, in bursts. But we want to make sure that we, um, you know, you, you, you're a bit more consistent over the four quarters. But it's certain areas at different times, you know, we're still confident we can keep improving. That's what we'll try and do. So just, this is a bit left field, but you see a lot of players run off um, as soon as they kick a goal across games in the competition. Is that something that you guys, I know it doesn't apply in this case, but is that something that you guys use? And, and what's the process you know, around that. And I could see some guys might be on for three minutes and then they're off again. So. No, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen? No, it seems like that because that's the cameras on them for that moment. But right. Like Joel came off in a pre-arranged rotation about yeah. the 15-minute mark of the last quarter, yeah. which was he kicked the goal just before and he just happened to come off. Right. So sometimes that just... It's just right. a, almost a coincidence that the camera goes on that player after he's kicked the goal and he comes on. Right. So that was a pre-arranged rotation. And you've got to have those rotations because if you don't you're playing the whole quarter yep. and then your output as a player gets yep. reduced and then you put them at risk with injury so yeah. it's something that we're we're doing it to help us as a team yeah. be better and also help the player get through the game and be more effective um, as the game goes on yeah keller mills update what's the um, the plan from here uh he's in team training uh so we need a we need a block of training and that'll depend upon how long that goes for depend upon how he goes in the, in the block of training he's been training now for a few weeks tackling um running around doing all that you'll need another couple of weeks of of solid training and see how he goes um so that's the plan for him he's been pulling up really well um you know he's like, talked to him the other day, he said, oh, you know, I've been pulling up well after training sessions, but we need to give him a, a good block of training and that'll depend upon how long that is, will depend upon how he pulls up from the training sessions. So could it be a VFL game in a couple of weeks? Maybe, we don't know yet. I mean, we, I'm not sort of, it's not at the forefront of our minds just yet. We want to get him into a training bl block, which is, he's doing at the moment, he's into that training block, another couple of weeks of training, then we'll see what it, what it looks like. In terms of off-the-field stuff, we've seen a bit of talk this weekend about the Father Sons and Academy bidding process potentially changes this year. Is the, the club aware of those discussions going on and in terms of how it could change for, I guess, for you guys in particular with the Academy? Um, yeah, we're in the, we're aware of those discussions going on, but to be honest, we're in the dark. Most clubs, are, all clubs, I would say, are in the dark as far as what the plans are for it this year. I don't think anyone really knows. So we're waiting to, hopefully it happens pretty quickly, we're waiting to hear from the AFL what the, what the plans are in a whole number of areas. Um, I know that there's a lot of discussions and a lot of work's been done in the background, but um, the season's getting on and the planning for the end of the season is important, so it'd be nice to know sooner rather than later. Would you hope that the changes are maybe in 12 months' time? Because I know like last year's draft you were able to get picks in or uh, picks in for this year that you've probably got a few plans already in place for this season. It, it would be in an ideal world, but I think the AFL have already said bad luck at some point's coming in and you've got to get, get over that. And now, ideally, we'd like to be able to have a runway. When I say we, the competition, the clubs would like to have a runway into any change. It's a bit like the, the change in the interpretation of the holding the bill. You'd like a bit of a runway into it rather than just nice and quick. So, um, but I think the AFL, are, I don't know really, but I think they're just at some point the change is going to have to happen and deal with it. A couple more guys. What did, what did you make of the Giants yesterday, ahead of the Derby? Um, I've seen a little bit of it. We had a yesterday, so um, down in Melbourne, our 25-year one, so I've seen probably about three quarters of it, and um, 
they played really well against a good team. You know, Port Adelaide are a really good team. They had nearly 30 sh scoring shots, the Giants. So um, that's a real credit to them. They're, they're a good team. They're a really good team. Is James Jordan going to Lockie Whitfield again? Don't know yet. We haven't got to the planning stage. We're not quite over the review stage. We haven't had the review stage yet, so we'll get to the uh, planning stage when we, uh, when we finish our review. It worked well last time, though, and he's such a damaging player for them, isn't he? Yeah, they've got lots of damaging players, though. It'll be interesting whether you know, Ash comes back in. They've got plenty of damaging players. They're a highly talented team. They're a really good footy team. And, um, and so they've got good players everywhere. And so you can make a case for a number of players. Um, so you know, it'll be a tough one. The commentators um, suggested during the game, or late in the game when Marty came off, that you were looking after your 14 goal and your kicks in, <laughs> in, uh, in, in, in your 30, 40, uh, in the 41st game. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you remember that game? No, I don't remember. It was back in the black and white days, Mel, so uh, it was a you long time ago. You 14 goals? That would be like 200. Uh, well, I happen to watch it every night, but other <laughs> I think it was one of the... F uh, unfortunately, was, I don't think it's ever made the videotape, so it was the best game it's never made on tape, so it actually could be a myth. Who knows whether it happened or not. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.